come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast live. Live. Live from the basement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the sound of the beer opening in the basement. <laughs> and, and that wasn't Holly squealing, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, welcome back, everybody. All the internet radio superstars are once again gathered around the physical bar, Fully not the virtual yeah. bar. <laughs> Yelp. Colin, this is the first time I've legitimately seen you outside my computer screen in a year. Like, I, in yeah, this, a is, year. this is this is freaky weird and yeah. <laughs> amazing. Yeah, you're not four inches tall anymore. <laughs> well, uh, who are these internet radio superstars? Holly. Sean. Oh, 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 oh. I'm used to going first. We've got order. I'm used to going first. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh Around my the- god. I'm all thrown off. This this is is wonderful. Wonderful. Take that again. Uh, Sean. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Holly. And I know this because she's sitting in the seat. This I'm is so much seat. easier. Yay. <laughs> it's going to be like this for the entire hour. Yeah, as we yeah. have to readjust to our four. Like, what? Um, yeah, what, so what did we watch tonight? Tonight we watched The Others. Mm, from the year. 2001. Directed by Alejandro. Go let for me, it. Let me get this. Hold on. Hold on. I know this. It's. Anemabar. Alejandro Anemabar. Anemabar. Okay. Yes. And we would know him from? Um, you would know him from, he wrote Vanilla Sky. That's oh. his most. His Isn't that another twisty movie? It is another twisty movie. Okay. He yeah. wrote it or he did the original? Okay, book. yeah. So he's cr- he's credited for writing it, but he wrote the Spanish version, um, which came out first. And then um, then uh, came across about the rights for it. And, you know, history was made. Um what Open your eyes. I Open your eyes. Thank you. Yeah, I was yeah, about yeah. to look at my nose. I'm like, I forgot where to go. <laughs> Open your eyes. Yes. Yeah. That one also had Penelope Cruz in it. it she did, was in yes. both of them. She was yeah. in both of them. Mm-hmm. And he did a movie that uh, kind of made the rounds on the horror circuit. It was called Thesis. Mm-hmm. That was his first movie. Yeah. 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 Which is, I guess, about it. I haven't seen it, but I did hear, like, I mean, the name of it came up. Yeah. From what I read about it, I was like, that might be kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. I've never heard about it. What's... It's a graduate student who discovers uh, she's like in a film project or class and she finds a snuff movie uh, tape in the. Yeah, that does sound cool. It was like his first movie and it like did well, like it was. Well, it didn't. It was well received. Like people really liked it. Well, the idea here that I'm getting is it sounds like the guy's a horror movie director, but uh, that may not entirely be the case. Right. Like um, the rest of his career. I think he did do another like thriller movie. Um. Yeah, what was it? He's done, um, he did a movie called The Sea Inside with Javier Bardem, and I don't think that was very horror-like, but there was one called Regression yeah. with Ethan Hawke and Emma yeah. Watson, and that was more like suspense, thriller, yeah, um, yeah, so that did have more of that tone to it. He just really likes dark content, mm. so it's not necessarily horror, but yeah, very say. much dark characters. Thanks. He actually, he said before um, that he's... Uh, he's like, I didn't. I don't consider myself a dark person. I just really like dealing with dark characters. Mm. And I was like, that's obvious, <laughs> <laughs> right? So you had seen this movie before? I had never seen it. That's crazy to me. I can't I believe because like this was such a cultural phenomenon when it came out uh-huh. to the point that like on VH1 and like I love the 2000s and Best Week Ever and stuff. They were showing clips of this movie and right. stuff. I mean, it was everywhere. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure this made it into a scary movie. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. it was parodied sure it into did. a scary movie at I some point. It had to I have. am yeah. your daughter. Yeah. Definitely yeah. got yeah. parodied at some point. I think I... See, it's just funny because I just, like, happened to miss all of these, like, touchstones that, like, made fun of it or, you know, honored it or whatever. It was just this weird time in my life where I was just, like, in a box and I just didn't... But I, I, I'm, like, aware of its, of its existence. Like, I knew about that. I'm not your daughter. I knew about yeah. that. that's the only I'd part I know. I'd seen the trailer a thousand times. Like, I was well aware that this existed, and I knew there was, like, a big twist. That's all I knew. Which, uh, speaking of which, if you're listening to this podcast, we're assuming that you have mm-hmm. seen the movie. So uh, we're going to we're gonna talk a little about it, even though yeah. we're going to recommend or not recommend it when we're done. But, um, yeah, okay, so, so take us back. It's 2001. There's a um, – The Sixth Sense had come out. In 1999. Yeah. Yes. Yep, yeah. Right. So that kind of primed, uh, and everybody seemed to be like really into the movie with a big twist ending. Mm-hmm. Um, 
the other seems like it's an unlikely movie to become like a um you know like a box office juggernaut i mean now we've just watched it sean did you seen this before I had not. I'm sure I've seen like little clips of stuff mm -hmm. and all that, but I, sitting down and watching this whole way through, no way. Like mm -hmm. there's so much of this movie I did not know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is yeah my first time tonight. Okay. But all I right. do remember it being like we said a yeah. big thing back in the day. Like, it was the ever the advertising it, it budget for this everywhere. thing. Yeah. Very huge. aware it of, its, of its existence. Yeah. yeah. So I guess uh, one of the questions because I'm trying to even remember like in now watching it, I'm like, why was this movie such a big deal? It seems like I mean because it's a slow moving. It's a, yeah, it's a slow burn. But Nicole Kidman is hot, hot, hot. I at was this gonna time. say it's Nicole Kidman. What else Kidman. was she doing? Yeah. At this time, yeah. I'm gonna well, I up. mean, Eyes Wide Shut was ninety nine, right? Yeah. I think so so I mean, she's Stanley coming Kubrick. off of wow. that. And this know? was uh, amidst the the Tom Cruise breakup, wasn't yeah. it? So yeah. they were like was all, it over, that long ago? all over the media. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I think they got divorced. If memory serves, like right before the movie came out. Because he produced this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I yeah. saw that oh. and I was like, yeah. that? I was, like, I, I was like, no, it's not that Tom Cruise. Like, that's yeah. a, it's all my It would be it rather ironic line. if another Tom yeah. Cruise produced <laughs> Nicole Kidman's yeah. movie. She's like, you don't say. Yeah. Funny, and funny story. <laughs> my ex-husband is Tom Oh, Cruise. my God. <laughs> I'll never get tired of seeing that picture of her leaving her divorce lawyer's office the day their divorce got finalized. You guys seen those pictures of her? Smile. Her <laughs> fists are yeah. up in the air. She's <laughs> smiling at the sky and like, is so, like you can just see the weight coming off her shoulders. I'm sure that was not a like, fun divorce. She's like Andy Dufresne and Shawshank. Yeah, thing. that's right. exactly what it's like. It's a wonderful On a bright picture. sunny day, yeah. she walks yeah. outside and just yeah. starts raining. Well, the, um, yeah, because I think uh, the connection there was the Cameron Crowe movie. It was Vanilla yes. Sky, right? Because right. he'd worked on uh, Amanda Barr's other, you know, the remake. And yes. so, yeah. Um, so this movie was uh, filmed in England, even though he's Spanish. I think there yeah, was he also. Was, he was born in Chile. His, uh, I think his dad is is from Chile and his mom was from, 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 from when he was like one he moved to Spain and grew up in Madrid okay. so he's a pretty pronounced Spanish director he's done a lot of movies that were pretty big in Spain was this uh, did I read somewhere that this movie like won a bunch of the Goyas that's their Oscars mm -hmm. yeah he's won, he's won quite a few of yeah, those. but yeah. specifically for this even though it's yes. not a Spanish movie yeah, this or one, is it a Spanish this movie this one's several all the, a lot it, of the crew was Spanish, it looked like, from the credits. So. He, yeah, he works with a lot of Spanish crew. Was it either. filmed in Spain? <laughs> was it? I don't know. I believe it was. I think like, the whole thing was, was like, shot. Was it? Yeah, because it, it would... For convenience sake, it would. Yeah, because it's all it's all done on studios. Because I mean, that was you know, it's a studio set. When I was watching it tonight, I'm like, did they find somewhere to shoot this? Is this an old house, or mm -hmm. did they actually build a set? But I mean, it is a set. The exteriors, obviously, I think, are somewhere in uh, Spain. Okay. But it's set in uh, Jersey on the, the what channel? island? The Channel Islands. Yeah. Where's that? England. England. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually, uh, I think the thing with the, because the, they mentioned it in the movie, it becomes a plot point that uh, it was uh, the Channel Islands were a part of England that were actually occupied by the Nazis right. during right, right, World yeah. War II. Uh, 2001, Moulin Rouge also came out. So yeah. This is a gigantic year yeah. for Nicole Kidman. I was, was going to say. Her that's... string was The Peacemaker with George Clooney. Mm. Uh, then she did Practical Magic. Mm -hmm. then, yes. Obviously, that was Eyes yes. Wide Shut, Moulin Rouge, <laughs> then the others. And then she went into Birthday Girl. Mm -hmm. And then the hours was in 2002, so mm -hmm. this is like a big hot streak wow. for her. Yeah, okay. Well, and then Dogville and Cold Mountain, like she was oh, unstoppable oh, in the oh, early yeah. odds. Yeah. Well done, Nicole Kidman. <laughs> well, that okay. So star power, we're saying, is the star power. reason for the. Um, but I just you know now watching it, I'm like, okay, well you know you go into it thinking you know this is going to be a horror movie, it's really scary, and then uh, it's kind of. Um, restra it's like a heavily restrained movie. Mm -hmm. Is this the Crimson Peak of its time? <laughs> but I was actually thinking that while we were watching that, I'm like, this is a movie that like, uh, it seems like Guillermo del Toro is, you know, because yeah. I was like, is this like a, the movie that M. Night Shyamalan would have done back then? Because it's a twisty movie. But it's like, this is a Guillermo del Toro movie. Yeah. Except Guillermo del Toro would over design everything. Yes, yes exactly. Yes. It'd be far yes. more beautiful. Yeah. I I think this movie is beautiful. I, I think, think this it movie is too. gorgeous. I think it is very painterly in its mm -hmm. cinematography. And I... Like, I'm kind of upset this director hasn't done better after this, you know? Like, I'm kind of upset he that he doesn't Spain. have more stuff here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm mm -hmm. surprised he hasn't actually right. done, like, more American films. But, I mean, it has, this has a, uh, it's got, like, a classic look to right. it, right? 
Um, it actually almost kind of seems like maybe a movie out of time or like this could have been like something that was done in the right. you know, 1940s or yeah. something. I keep that. It's got the that 60s. timeless. It could be filmed anytime. Yeah. 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 Forget yeah. 1917. Watch this movie. You know, like <laughs> uh, you, mean, want, you want your candlelight movie. It's this movie. Like, yeah, no, for real. This, yeah. As much as light plays a part in this movie, like it is a character in this movie. Yeah. It's, it's really pronounced in a very subtle way. It's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's all like oil lamp light or natural mm -hmm. light. And yeah. It. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It has, and like, like you're saying is a major plot point in the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, the, um, well, I guess, yeah. Uh, the, the thing I was thinking of as far as comparison, and I know we just saw uh, the haunting of Bly Manor was a Netflix show that was on, yeah, a cup uh, last year, right? Last year, yeah. And that was inspired by uh, the turn of the screw. Mm -hmm. And have you guys seen the? the uh, <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. <laughs> yeah, it's a movie is with that no that Is it that Finn Wolfhard movie? Yes. Yeah. And and yeah. And what's her name? Uh, I can't remember her name. The. Mm. Mm. No. Give me some. Mackenzie. Uh, Mackenzie Gray. No. No. no Grace. Uh, what the uh, Mackenzie Grace? No, 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 the older what's, woman from what's like, she in? Like what? Else get back, is get she back in? to me. Yeah. I'm blank. I haven't had to do the like recall. I mean, I suppose I have. <laughs> Shit. Uh, but, well, I'll, the, I'll look it up. I'm yeah. gonna look it up. No, I'm trying to do it without. <laughs> uh, but have you seen the uh, the the night in Mackenzie in, Davis? Yes. There you go. Oh yeah. Okay, I know. Who, uh, in the 1960s, they did uh, the Innocence. Mm -hmm. uh, was a movie that was based on Turn of the Screw. Yeah. And I guess it came to mind also because you have a woman with two kids in a big spooky gothic house. Yeah. You know. Which um, you know I love. I love yeah, a big right. spooky yeah, gothic that's house. Why I'm shocked you'd never seen this. This is like catnip for you. This is I your know. movie. Like, <laughs> you know? It's because I was in a cult at the time. I know. That's why I was told you. <laughs> but off mic, we were talking about I was like doing the timeline math for you to figure out. Oh, that's why she wasn't yeah. into it. She was... In that bubble. <laughs> it was just missing billowing curtains or something in that There was long... lots of curtains in this column. Yeah, I know, but they didn't billow. <laughs> they, didn't billow. The, yeah. they, they, didn't. they didn't open any fucking windows in this movie. They <laughs> no. were like, no. I would hate that. that. That's my nightmare. No open windows. I mean, this whole thing's yeah. like a nightmare. Just... Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, in order to talk about it, do we have to work Jump from in? the back forward? I mean, like knowing where it ends up and go, because we're assuming, like I said, that the uh, listener, you have watched this movie. Or you've been warned. Yeah. Either way. yeah. Okay. Well, first I want to ask, mm -hmm. when did you figure it out? Or did you figure it out? Yeah. Okay. I know I have a specific moment, but okay. what about, so you were just watching it tonight. When did you have it uh, figured out? I think earlier on I had the, what I thought earlier on was I thought that the three um, older people who come to the house at the beginning of the movie, I thought they were the exorcists and they were trying to get her out. Like I thought they were all, like her and the kids were all still dead. Shock. Uh, mm -hmm. Surprise. Yeah. Spoiler. Mm -hmm. uh, surprise. Um, I thought they were all dead from the beginning because especially when she's um, uh, talking about the light, the, the kids are sensitive by light. You know, that's not true. Or at least you, it's plain. It's, I think it's supposed to plant in your head yeah. that you're just like, okay, because they're setting everything up and you're yeah. just uneasy about it. But, um, uh, yeah, so I thought they were the exorcists trying to get them out when it switched and they were dead as well. It's just like, oh, okay. But then I guessed somewhere before I figured out, just like somebody's trying to get them out of the house. Mm. I didn't know there was going to be like the flip and reverse of it, which was pretty great. But so a little bit early on, I had a feeling, but there's no mm -hmm. way I could have guessed like right out be like, hey, yeah. there's an exorcism going on. <laughs> for me, it was or, like, uh, uh, um, this wasn't my first time watching this, but uh, for me, it was like she, her constant mention of how they were able to keep the Nazis out during <laughs> occupation. I was like, who are you, though? Like, you keep mentioning this, but it seems kind of more like wish fulfillment. Like, if she could go back and do it again, that's how, you know, like, oh. to me, that was always, she just kept mentioning that, you know, and I was just like, that sounds like a guilty conscience, you know, more than anything. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of the dialogue that I think eventually plays into that. Mm -hmm. When was it? So it was your first time, Holly? My when first you, time, yeah. Well, did you figure, did you see it, the end coming before it, uh, it sprung yes. on you? So I, when they were having their, um, like, school session and they were reading the Bible and talking about the different hells and different and purgatory and limbo and stuff. I was like, well, they're dead. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that's clear. Um, and then I, and then I was like, okay, so are the servants, are they dead? And I was like, I think they are. But then the others, right. the intruders, yeah. that's when I was, that was a surprise to me. I was like, okay, so where do they factor in? Are they, the, are they alive? 
are they? But I didn't see the uh, I, I didn't see the sands. That was a surprise. Yeah, that was, I was like that's cool. That was pretty cool. But yeah. that's yeah. Like, that's cool. cool. You're just like, oh, yeah. I love it because we're seeing like yeah. what, what do the ghosts go through so I in love, a seance? I love that I caught on and was still surprised. Yeah, that was very yeah. cool. I liked that. Yeah, I remember that scene being kind of because it it occurred to me. And it was funny that you mentioned Beetlejuice at the end of the movie, because that is the like in the theater. That is what occurred to me when they were <laughs> yeah. when she was going right. out into the fog. And like, they're not going to get very she's not going right. to get very Sam far. Yeah. And, yeah. And I'm like, this is like Beetlejuice. Yeah. And then it was like, wait a second. <laughs> you know, yeah. does this mean they're dead? Um, so, yeah, this is a ghost story in reverse, basically. Yeah. And that's yeah. the big twist that the movie springs on its audience. Um, I mean, well done, because how do you how do you really come up with a solid twist after Sixth Sense? You know what I mean? Yeah, because that was a great twist. We all know that. How do you come up with a solid one that has a fresh take? I like it. I mean, technically, I it's the it. same one. They were dead. Yeah, well, that's, what I, that's what I mean. <laughs> like, how do you do it? Because it's off. the same, like, it's the same thing. But they still managed. He still managed to do it. Yeah, yeah. no, they, I, yeah. they did. They had still managed to do they it. Reverse it, but they had that hook. Or just yeah. like, ooh, that's a good it's one. Like solid. Well, that's I what like I'm trying it. to remember. If like at that time, if part of it, uh, you know, why the it became a success was because people were like, yeah, I'm not going to tell you, but you got to go see this movie because you know, um, it's well, a, it's got a twist. Yeah. And as we were talking about, we were one, while we were watching this, it has terrifying scenes in the daytime, which yeah. is really hard to pull off. And like we were talking about Insidious uh, yes. much later on would do that same thing really yeah. well, too. But mm-hmm. like, I wonder if in 2001 when this came out, this was like an early version of that. You know, like, was there yeah. movies before this that had really terrifying ghost stuff in the daytime? That's what I was wondering. Like, you know? Because when we yeah. watch this stuff so much later, and this is what, 2001? Mm-hmm. 2001. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're coming up on the 20 year anniversary Jeez. in August. Yeah. So I always yeah. wonder, like, uh, back then, we're like, were they doing movies like this? Had we gotten to that point mm-hmm. of like the that insidious ghost story? Because yeah. this feels like there's always some kind of version of it, but this feels like we're starting right. to ramp up into it. Because I know, we, like, we talk about it frequently. How we've seen so many movies, it's hard to scare us anymore. Yeah. So when I get a legit jump scare and it works on me, I'm fucking impressed. Mm-hmm. And I got it a couple times in this. It it did uh, help that Collins got like. Me- the sound eight point nine surround yeah. sound down yeah. here, the where people are breathing home. in my ear <laughs> yeah. and shit like that. So we were the the thumping across the floor was yeah. terrifying. Like the, with the, the sound system, the breathing, the talking that sounds like I was legit goosebumps. The like, thumping is what I don't know what it is, but thumping on the floor, like getting closer, yeah, yeah. that scares the shit out of me, no yeah. matter what. For sure, because it's just like oh, something's coming, and I know it, and it just yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of surprised. It's like you know, as we're we're talking about like you know the insidious movies that came later, and then that seems like that inspired like an entire wave of you know Ghost in right. the House movie, the whole Blumhouse oh, yeah. uh, factory right. there for a while mm-hmm. was doing that. Um, those I think were inspired by J- like the J horror uh, in uh, um, influx that happened right around this time, but this was still I think J horror was off mainstream hollywood radar okay when this was like you know this is mainstream hollywood stuff but um those movies go more for like visual shock and this movie is like you're saying in the sound design yeah. right it's yeah. like all like i mean there's a lot of like sound work yeah. Yeah. taking place he, in this movie i mean you know as we we noticed in the credits like he did his own music you know he wrote this he directed it he tends to be very hands-on with those movies and i, I think like it. he really gets the Movie is an there's an ambiance, you know what I mean. That like, is like true auteurship, it, and yes, I love it. Like I do too. I thought the score was fantastic. To this I did movie, too, yeah. and I did not remember that about this movie. Mm-hmm. But I think watching this movie with 2021 eyes, I don't think the influence of this movie can be stated enough. Like I think we forget how much people look to, look to this movie, and even still look to this movie. And I think it's kind of not getting the credit it deserves in that sense. Like even there was a couple scenes when she was running around the house with a shotgun and that long gown that was like, did the people who were ready or not see this movie? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I think the DNA for this movie is in every movie that came yeah. after it. And now, you know? now that we've watched it, I'm, I don't remember exactly what was said, but I remember we talked about this on the boy at some mm-hmm. point. I'm pretty yeah. sure we did. And I'm like, I see it now. I, I oh, really yeah. do see the similarity yeah. now. And we joke. This is this could be a prequel to the book. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's like a scene missing that yeah. you could just put in there and we go right the, into the boy. The, right? The, oh, I don't want to say that. I don't want to spoil the boy. I was going to say that kid in this movie could connect yeah, to the could, boy. Well, right, he so. looks like he's the model yeah. for that uh, that for the doll. boy. Yeah, in the boy. Um, 
Like seriously, yeah, like, yeah. it's just spooky. He's how really much same kid. Yeah. less eyebrows, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I think the DNA that makes up this movie stretches back, you know, through. Uh, you know, you were talking about like a movie that does like daytime horror stuff. I mean, obviously, The Shining. You know, different yeah. Yeah. Stuff right, right. bright yes. daylight, The Changeling, uh, The Haunting. I think also has like mm-hmm. you know this has it, that uh, that in its DNA. Um, but it's it, I think it was weird at the time to have a movie in 2001 try to do like this you know simple restrained yeah. uh ghost story right mm-hmm. you know that's like all sound design because i mean there's really there was a scene um early on where the little boy is scared in his room and the sister is like talking to victor mm-hmm. yeah. the ghost that she's like come out from behind the the curtain, yeah. you know, and the kid's like, I'm not even going to, I mean, that scene was like scary as fuck. It was. <laughs> and there's like nothing happening. Right. It, yeah. It's and they like did, very lo-fi scary. And they did a very good job because at that point, like the misdirection is very real because I was really like, this little girl's doing it, right? Like she's fucking with it. Right. Like she, what, it, she's doing this. It, it, and, nothing. If, if it doesn't scare you, it gets you to like pay attention. Cause yeah. you're like, is her mouth moving? Like, like yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, that okay, sounds right. like her. Is that her? And at the end we find out Victor's real. I was like, holy shit. Like that was really well done. Yeah. But like, I don't really even know if she was fucking with him. In I don't know scene. either. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't think you're, I don't yeah, know. we'll never know. <laughs> but it, that's why it's brilliant. But that's why, you know, like we're saying, like he's a good director because the fact that you're looking at like, you know, is she talking when she, yeah. her face is turned away from the camera and if you're watching that scene, he's cutting away. He's not, there is no way to actually right. see yeah. if she's moving or not. So yeah. he's thinking that you're checking this out as the viewer, mm-hmm. you it's, know? It's so funny. Like I, I was thinking about it when we were watching this, I watch a lot of cooking shows and they always say like, you don't have to make a complicated dish, keep it simple, but do it perfectly. And I'm like, that's what he's doing in this movie. Everything is really simple, really basic, but it's just so well done. It's so effective. Like, Everything is really thought through and and really strategic. Yeah. Like, that's spectacular. Well, he has, like, an internalized perspective, you know, I mean, which I kind of appreciate when you go to make, like, a scary movie. You're not going, like, well, what, what would be scary to, you know, how can I scare you? Mm-hmm. He's yeah. looking at stuff that scares him. Yeah. It seems to me. And, you know, like, trying to assume the point of view of, like, well, what would scare a little kid, you know, or me as a kid or something yeah. like that, you know. Um all right, so the movie is about. Uh, so at the beginning of the, at the beginning of the film, right? Nicole Kidman is waking up screaming in her bed. By the way, well done for like the first scene of the movie scaring me. Yeah, good job. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, good job. After this nice, quiet, like uh, opening credit, yeah. you know, candlelit credit sequence, Nicole Kidman screaming into the camera lens. Yeah. So she had just shot herself in the face, uh, and we yeah. just didn't see it. That yep. was her waking up, uh, yep. screaming. Oh, because yeah. she yeah, like the oh. it started right there. <gasps> oh God! Because remember the end of the movie, she says like I don't even remember it. I just woke up screaming. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God! And then she heard yeah. the little girl playing in the but, other room, and like, she had the pillow in her hands. Yeah. <gasps> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh goosebumps! Holly's putting it all together right now. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> well, see, but this is the thing that you don't see on the first watch. And now right. this is right. this right, is yeah. my second time going right. through it. So right. The theater, I'm like, Genius. okay, I know what's happening here, and like, oh, he's doing it right from the get go. Right. <laughs> like this is Brilliant. how it starts. Um, okay, so she, um, why'd she kill her? She killed her children and herself right yes, in grief. this big gothic mansion yes. why did she kill the kids she grief she mm-hmm. was she had lost her mind from grief mm-hmm. her husband is not dead no because he said he i came to say goodbye right. he came back so he came to make his peace and see come. the maybe see the house one last time and so i'm looking for her motivation as to why she killed herself she, is it just because he's she, gone did she, she thought he was dead yeah well he just, is he is dead he's a lost soul out there he's like you know, because he dies in war that's what i'm wondering like he died in war right she, she doesn't know where that, he is she, then killed herself wait, but then how does he come back to the house because she finds him in the fog yeah. he's wandering the fog right. is like you but, know some kind of cross dimensional so he's not bound barrier. to like oh, anything so the spirit. fog is the limbo I think so. Okay. And she's okay. someone out there and, you know, he was drawn to her and then he's okay. like, you know, and then yeah. he's just kind of like wandering didn't have a in a beacon see, out I the took fog it until she he, came out. I took it as he wasn't dead and that this was like him coming back to the house to like grieve and finish things up and then move on with his life. See, I think oh, you can take well, it that I way too. Because it, yeah. he said like, what did he say? Something like, I, I, it's time for me to go. I came to say goodbye. Yeah, he came. Like that. See, that's yeah. why I took it that way. Yeah. He said he came and to it, say goodbye. Yeah. It makes more sense that way because he's 
he's very upset. He's laid upset. in the bed for days. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's disoriented, but, yeah. I think. But he does say maybe he is tied to somewhere because he's like, I have to go back to the front. You know, that's yeah. where he's right. bound right. to. He's, yes. Right. You know. See, but then I feel like you could also take that as he got granted leave because his wife and kids all died to come home and Ooh, finish like things this. up, say goodbye, oh, and, and go back. Right. <laughs> Woo, I love this. Great points all around. Yeah. Yeah. That's played by Christopher Eccleston uh, yes. in, a, yeah. in an early role. Fantastic. We uh, we were trying to track back like uh, uh, where we'd first seen him. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. like, where does this fit in his career timeline? Uh, he was in Danny Boyle's uh, Shallow Grave. Before this, yeah, you, that's, a that, movie, that's a great movie. That's a great movie. That's been on my list for the freak show for a long time. Yeah, Never seen it. Mm-hmm. really? Never it's seen seen it. It. Ewan McGregor's in it too. It is. It oh, is nice. like a low budget Scottish horror movie. It's Ooh, nice. Yeah. I'm in. Is that like one of? Uh, <laughs> that's a sidebar. But mm-hmm. Danny Boyle is this like his first his movie. His first movie. Okay, yeah, it's on Criterion. Movie. I have. I think I have the Blu-ray. I have yeah. Criterion of it somehow. It's like a Hitchcockian thriller. Yeah, my introduction to Eccleston has got to be gone in sixty seconds. Yes, that's okay. And that was pre. That was before this. And 20 days later was after this. Mm-hmm. And his run as Doctor Who and all that was yep. after mm-hmm. this. Um, okay, so so she, so the kids uh, in life, right, suffered from a uh, photo light, like a sunlight photo uh, sensitivity yes. disease. I'm sorry. I'm still thinking about the debate. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, right. <laughs> whether, whether the man is thinking, dead or alive. I'm still thinking about it. But, Man. Uh, but what, <laughs> okay, because I'm now I'm trying to think of like okay, what the the housekeeper like her comments about him coming back, right? And she seemed very surprised to see him. Yeah, yeah. I, I I'm still Ooh. trying to I'm still trying to like Listeners, figure it out. Do you think he's dead or do you think he's alive? Tell us. Yeah, because yeah, she says, uh, you know, like or he says, does the husband suspect anything? Yeah, mm-hmm. and you know, uh, uh, the question being like, does he suspect that he's dead? Right, and or she does answers, he suspect that we're dead? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, yeah, 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 it right. Could go yeah. Right. Yeah. Way. <laughs> and she re- she says that I don't even think he knows where he is. Yeah, let's, let's put it this way: based on the end of the movie, I think he's dead yeah, because they're all ghosts. Everybody in the everyone movie in this is dead. ghosts, yeah. and it took some doing from the seance to even like get to reach in to their world. I'm going to call it, and because the old lady shows up, the, who's running the seance, she shows right. up. The kids see her. Mm-hmm. Victor shows up, but the husband's there, you, like full bright as day. So he's got to be dead. Maybe like the seance is bringing is bringing on the fog and like bringing it's an him open back door. and yeah. opening the door. Yeah, and he that's why he's able to come in. Yeah, uh, maybe you know. I think yeah, I think it's choose your own adventure at this, this point. Man. Ultimate philosophy, man. <laughs> you can find yeah. anything in this. Okay. If you're in college, yeah. write a paper on this movie. You right? can Apparently, you yeah. can win no matter what argument. Uh-huh. Right? You spend. Oh, I love this. Okay, sorry, <laughs> well, the kids. What? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that there. Is, well, there's a lot of philosophy in the movie. There's a heavy religious. Uh, yeah. I would say even overtone. It's like directly. Um, they're they're a very religious family. I suppose, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Or at so, least Nicole Kidman is very religious. But yeah, and and, and we see the process and of we, that we see it, over Yeah, and kids. we see it come we like the way it comes through to the end, it's like I, I get the impression that maybe the director had religion shoved down his throat at points in his life. I mean and it would then, seem like it based came, on this movie. Well, and then he comes out the other side thinking, I don't fucking believe anything or I don't know what I believe or we have no idea you know like I, I feel like that might reflect his own personal beliefs based on his life yeah that daughter the questions she was asking yeah. was like oh you're you're way ahead of your time yeah. girl most people don't even reach that stage in life so good child. Child. Yeah. <laughs> well I, mean, I think a lot of people who have like a religious faith like have those questions at some mm-hmm. point that they but somehow you know they I would they hope so come to grips with them or explain yeah. them but I think in the case of the movie the reason it's using religion is because I mean, you're explicitly talking about the afterlife, right? I mean, right. so we don't know it while we're watching it the first time. Right. Every time they're talking about, you know, uh, you know, whenever they're bringing up religion is specifically talking about like what happens after you die. Right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and this I, kind of preparatory thing, like yeah. you don't know it yet, but you're living in like the agnostic version of this where yeah. it could be limbo, you know, which I think is, is a Catholic philosophy limbo. Yeah. Okay. Because other branches of Christianity in don't have out. that. Yeah, yeah. you're in or out. <laughs> so you're living. This is a very well. Yeah. I think that's why he said he wanted to set it in Spain originally. Mm. Uh, he was planning on doing it in Spain because very you know, Catholic. Very Catholic. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's like, well, true. we could do it in England and Jersey at this point in time. And England's probably safer. Yeah. 
Um, because I mean, at the end, you know, we pretty much get the like hypothesis of the movie that it's like I know much, I know as much as you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as yeah. in we don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, know? but she doesn't like have the because uh, her whole um, philosophy going through is that you know, like God wouldn't allow the living and the dead to interact unless it's like at the end of time. But this is also a, a clue because like they're living in you know some kind of post life, uh, you know, it's the end of their time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, but also like. People did think it was the end of times during World War II. Like, and why wouldn't Any, you think that? Like, there is a world event. People yeah, think it's the end. The, the end times. I think they have throughout history. <laughs> like, not to get too deep on this movie, but I think this movie is like really like about PTSD. Like, yeah. especially like the post-war. Like, not just what like the people on the front lines experience, but what the entire world experienced. Like. Yeah. In a trauma sense Which after the World War II. makes a lot of sense because um, the director's mother escaped uh, a war in Spain mm-hmm. when she went to Chile and, Interesting. and met his dad. And then eventually they went back to Spain. But yeah, she escaped war. Yeah. So it would make sense that he would have that viewpoint in his movie. Hmm. Yeah. This movie's about like the traumas of war and how it doesn't just affect the people on the front lines. Like, yeah. And like, I know Del Toro tries to do that a lot with his movies, <laughs> but I prefer this take on it i would say I know, that's his, ironic i kind of yeah. did too which yeah. is strange because i mean i like it when del toro you know he i mean he is going after a lot of the same kind right, of yeah. Uh, yeah. themes and all that but this is like you don't need all the flashy you know like right, a right, camera exactly. prowling all over the place and the super design because the crimson peak was you know was the other movie that you know that it's, brought to mind it's but pretty like crimson sure. peak is like <laughs> I was even when watching that movie, I was like, imagine if they did it like the others in just a regular house <laughs> right. and not some like crazy, yeah. you know, but I mean, I guess, not you know, some bleeding house. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that's cool. And you don't get that image yeah, you know, it's anywhere right. else. Yeah. And that well, hasn't been done before. But I think the release date for Crimson Peak really hurt it a lot because I feel like when you put it out in October, People are like, oh, it's going to be like a spooky horror movie. And that's yeah, not I what think, that movie is, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we talked about that after. Because I saw an opening weekend. I think you did too, Colin. Yeah. Um, and I was like, that wasn't a horror movie. No, it's a gothic if I, if romance. If I had gone into yeah. it knowing that it was going to be a gothic romance, yeah. I would have liked it more. They sold it like it was going to be a spooky yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. But if it had been like an April release, you would have been like, okay. But it yeah. was a mid-October release, you know? Yeah. So. It's a good movie. Mm-hmm. But, you know, yeah, just it's, not, it's just not the movie you think it is. Yeah, exactly. You got to temper your expectations, don't you? Absolutely. Um, so the kids have this photosensitivity. Oh, that's right. I wrote it down. I forgot what it was called. It was like uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Zeno. Zeno. Oh, God. Uh, 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 While you're looking I don't at think it. Zeno's in it. <laughs> no, it is. It's zero, z- zero derma pigmentosium. Pigmentosum, which is some kind of, yeah, they actually yeah. do like pass out or something and it's, get boils. It is a real thing. And we we talked about during the movie it is uh, in Logan, Stephen Merchant's character has this, oh, yeah. Yeah, this same disorder. It is a real thing. Um, but I think at this point in the movie, I was trying to figure out where they're going. I'm like, okay, is she one of those moms that like keeps their kids sick? Like, right. That was yeah. the other that thing. That was the first thing I thought. I'm like, is um, that where we're going with it? And then I was like, that's too Munchausen's obvious. Yeah. Munchausen's. Yeah, yeah. By proxy. But I, that's the other thing I thought was that because her in in a normal situation, because her husband was at war or died in war, yep. she made up the son yep. allergy to keep, ju- her keep ki- them yep. close. Mm-hmm. That's where I was going. That's home. exactly like, what I paranoid. thought. That's this exactly what I thought. And I was like, oh, that's so obvious. I hope that's not what it is. Right. And even if it was, even if they did have this condition, she's using it as a way to control them. Yeah. She's mm-hmm. still taking it to an extreme degree, even if that is true. Yeah. Because, yes. you know. yeah. It sets up like a weird, like in the beginning of the movie with that whole, you know, like we can't open one door without locking the door across the hall we just came in through. And, you know, you're creating like this kind of hermetically sealed, you know, room of, or it's like all these chambers, you know, mm-hmm. you live your life in these chambers. And I think, uh, you know, maybe with Sean while we were watching, I was like, is this how she lives? Right. Like, this is would this drive her, a person is this, crazy. Is this her like, life? it did. It yeah. drove her it to the her edge crazy. of madness. Yeah. She said, what, 50 doors, right? Is that what she said? Yeah, 15, 15 keys to 50 doors. Yeah. 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 No. And that's all she does? Yeah. Right. Well, and like, okay, I'm sorry. If your house is that big, you don't need to close every door to avoid sunlight. It's very easy to avoid sunlight if your house is that fucking big. You know? <laughs> well, you just like, don't open the drapes. Yeah, ex- exactly. 
You don't need to close every door and lock it after you go through it. Can't take any chances. Yeah. She has she to is. do her needlepoint, Colin. That's right. She lives in the daylight. Yes. She, well, apparently I, she doesn't because uh, that's the whole thing of the, the idea that eventually light is going to come into this story and tell you what mm. actually is going on. It's going to shed some light <laughs> on it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, take My- your mic away. <laughs> no, I earned that. I don't know why I didn't pick up on it until this watching. It's not that important, but like the needle point she's working on is the veil for the communion outfit, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't notice that until yeah. now. It's not that important, but I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, that's what she was working yeah, on. Yeah. She's like sewing pearls on it. And I stuff, guess yeah. I thought it was going to be some like religious cross stitch, you know, some I mean, like, right. some, yeah, like punishment was... reminder, you know, yeah. like, but it is religious. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I thought I, I, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I thought it was going to yeah. have like a little message on it. Yeah, me oh. too. Like, especially since the daughter was being such a shit, you know, I thought it was going to be some punishment that reminder for actress her or something. Was fantastic. Yeah, his daughter. I think, yeah. Have we seen her? Yeah, I feel I was like we say, have. she looks very I need familiar. Look, I need to look that up because I was thinking the same thing. I was like, yeah. I've seen this little girl before. Yeah. When I looked her up, I thought she only had like two other credits, but she has a face that can both be kind of cherubic and uh, like sinister. Yes. Like creepy. Yeah. And I mean, by no fault of her own. It's just when right. she smiles, she's got those big eyes and the teeth and, you know, it's she just She understands kinda... the character she's playing. Yeah. She really yeah. does, which is kind of impressive for a kid her age. Like- her little giggles and shit that was creepy as hell yeah she's only got five credits total yeah. was the, she was in the girl with the pearl earring after this and then like a tv series that's what that i know it. her from yeah. she's the bratty little girl and the girl with the yeah. pearl earring and that's it <laughs> right that's what i know her from you don't you don't like them so I, she, no, I haven't seen it oh she, i love like, that movie went to college Scarlett or Johansson something and, and uh what's his name colin firth about the the painting girl with the, pearl the other boy wait have i hadn't seen that maybe i love that movie um i like, I like art movies though <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why you love this. Movie. So that means she basically like at some point she went to college, left acting behind and like got a career in something else. That's why she only has I five mean, yeah, probably <laughs> her, her parents, uh, unless she's dead. Her, oh, oh she's Jesus. Dead. <laughs> would she, but would she <laughs> know if she was dead? <laughs> um, they cast real ghosts in this movie. We don't know. Oh my God. That'd be genius. <laughs> <laughs> like he went, he went so far dedicated to his craft. It's like we're casting real ghosts. First time ever in a movie. Okay, well, I would do that. Here's my question. <laughs> well, we're talking about ghosts. So the, the the movie would like you, first time watcher, to believe that this is a haunted house movie because um, there's new owners that we find out later. There's new owners taking possession of the house, one of whom is uh, Catelyn Stark from uh, yes, Game, Game of, Game of Thrones. Thrones. Yeah. Michelle that was Far- a, Fairley. Yeah, that was a nice surprise. Yeah, it was see like, her hey, pop up in this. Yeah. You had a career before Game of Thrones. Good job. Um, Good job. <laughs> but we know th- that those folks have been apparently seeing ghosts. This is uh, all the times we hear people whispering yeah. in the corners. They're the, haunt- they're the people haunting it throughout the whole movie. Yeah. What? And they're, they eventually are having this seance with this old woman who's the medium, mm-hmm. who's uh, got cataracts and all that. She shows up uh, at least in one memorable scene. Which is the scene that you know always gets parodied from this movie, right? But I am right? your daughter. Yeah, yeah. because it's like uh, that was probably Michael a seance Jackson. that was happening. That was the parody in scary movie. Too. Yes, Michael, oh, Jackson. Michael Jackson. Yes, you're right. <laughs> Holy shit! And she pulls it off, and he goes. Ah! <laughs> That's right. You just unlocked a really deep memory. I did. It's like whoa, a really and deep hidden memory. Fla- yeah. Like this flashback, just like yeah, wave wow. of it's flashbacks. like an anime background, just like whoa. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Ah, wow. yeah. yeah, we should probably look up. I should have looked up at some point. Like how many connections this movie has to other to uh, every other yeah. other yeah. movies? Yeah. Um, which, like, okay, but that scene got parodied because it's terrifying. She's got the communion outfit, uh-huh. the veil over. She's playing, playing with, a, with a marionette in front of a candle. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, how yeah. many creepy things can you pack into one moment? Right. Yeah. Like, it's almost, it's almost, that's why it gets parodied, because it's almost comedic how it is, ridiculous it is. Yeah, 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 right? Yeah. You're just like, they're doing so much right yeah. here. It's almost parody itself. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it pays to go first, right? Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It's like, that's how you know you've landed. You've yeah. created a cultural yeah. uh, touchstone. And, like, I guarantee you, if I ask my husband if he's seen this movie he would say no but if he saw that clip oh, yeah. he'd be like oh yeah i've seen that movie i know he would say that like mm-hmm. so he's at but least then he'd be like scene. me be like i've never seen this movie <laughs> he says that and he'll be like i've never seen this movie and then we'll start watching it and 10 minutes in be like oh yeah i have seen this before i'm like yeah you just you, you just don't listen when i tell you what movie we're watching <laughs> <laughs> well what um what significant okay so the housekeepers right mm-hmm. who show up 
mm-hmm. which it's also interesting if you watch that scene where they're introduced again. They're just walking in from the fog. Yeah, well, they know, they, but they let her, it, she says everything. Like, they open the door and they're like, hello, man, we're here about that. And she's like, oh, yeah. You know, it's like, you're the help. Right. You know, and you're the gardener. And he's like, I'm the gardener. You know, mm-hmm. they're just filling in the, the roles that she said. But what significance do they have in this story? Why do you need them in the movie? Well, I want to ask Holly, what did you think when she revealed the thing about the letter not being mailed for the advertisement for the help and yet people still showed up what did you think at that point i mean yeah that was my first like "Mm, they might be ghosts that was that was my first they won't be ghosts they might be ghosts ghosts. yeah Yeah. and then i was like or you know they might it might be a situation that like they're trying to get their house back like it could be a situation like that but my first thought was yeah they're probably ghosts if this movie was made in like 2009 it would be a home invasion and they're trying to home invade right yeah you know they wouldn't be ghosts they were they would it would be like a stranger situation right Mm. you know because one of my thoughts was like maybe she's haunting their house and they want it back and you know i thought yeah well that was uh, that's what i thought it's part of the exorcism thing like yeah obviously like they want somebody needs to get out, right? But who's the exorcist? Who's, right. who's the medium? And who's the ghost? Mm-hmm. Who's the ghost? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Like it could go at that point. I was like, yeah, this could go a few ways. Mm-hmm. Are the, uh, but I guess that's my question: is why? So why wouldn't you just have a movie about a woman and her two kids in a house with like creepy things going on? I suppose because you always need some kind of a sounding board. Yeah. Um, she would have to have someone to talk to. Yeah, she already talks to those two kids, and they're look how they are. They're bratty as fuck, you know. She needs yeah. like an adult to talk to. Yeah, yeah, and we can't have her like just just because she does enough just running around the house, mm-hmm. investigating creepy stuff. Like if we didn't have those yeah. characters in it, like if they weren't part of the story, that'd be a lot of her just running around that. House. Yeah, and yeah. she she needs like someone there that to like second guess what she's seeing too. Mm-hmm. To to be yeah. like, oh no, that's not happening. No, there's no one in the yeah. house. I didn't hear. You got to have oh, someone yeah. gaslighting her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, we need disinformation. <laughs> yeah. to like if you're trying to keep your audience yeah. in the dark as long as possible, we got to have disinformation. You got to add everywhere. that layer. You, you can't know, know yeah. fully what's going on. Well, you, yeah. you we know that they're trying to and what is that actress's name? I mean, cuz she's great Finola? too. Finola Flanagan. Yeah. Uh who plays Mrs. Bell. Mm. Bell? Mrs. Bell? Something? No, Mills. Mrs. Mills, Mills. thank yeah. you very much. Uh <laughs> the ghostly uh caretaker. Yes. Um she clearly knows more than what she's telling. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's like that's what the impression that you get. You may not know like what she hiding, but you're yeah. trying to figure out like what's her angle, right? Yeah. Because she says that you know they worked in this house before, and then you're like, wait a second, if Nicole Kidman's family right. has been here for God knows how long, how could they have you know worked at this place before? That kind of thing where right. the timeline doesn't work out. At one point, um, Nicole Kidman gets the idea. That maybe, you know, she starts kind of giving into this supernatural spiritual belief that maybe the house is actually haunted because she finds and she thinks, you know, because the kids are seeing these uh, spirits Mm -hmm. that maybe there's a graveyard on the on the uh, on the grounds. Mm -hmm. Right. Because she's also found pictures of prior residents of the house. I believe that's what she's looking for. And the death oh, album. The death so album. What's, going with, what's going on with that? Oh, Love the creepy. death album, so cool. which I so it, great. It, which I also thought was going to come back in, but the other way. Like I had everything flipped. You thought, I thought Nicole Kidman was going to see herself. I thought Nicole Kidman and the yeah. kids were going to be in the book I at some point. Because you know, if you, I mean, you know, if you introduce the death book early in the movie, <laughs> the death book is coming back <laughs> yeah. at the end of the movie. But yeah. who's going to be in it? So. Uh, something I was thinking about when she's flipping through the death book is it's really funny to me to think about that they got a bunch of like like extras to like pose for those photos. <laughs> right. You're like, all right, pretend like you're in a, like an old timey death photo. Like, n- yeah. tilt your head to the side and like hold hands. Maybe you know, like to actors. me that was really funny to think. That about. is really funny. Maybe they were freshly dead. I thought they said that uh, <laughs> some of them may have been uh, authentic. I'm not sure, but I know that your director is in one of those shots. Yeah, uh, that's his little cameo appearance. Nice. nice. Yeah, that's a cool cameo. That's, yeah, yeah. Like that. right. That's yeah. that's worth being like. I was in death book. I'm okay yeah, I'm with that cameo. It's good yeah. prop to have in your office. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's just weird. Yeah, I mean, it's creepy seeing, I mean, I know they did it back then, and we're told that yeah. the reason was, you know, they thought that the person's spirit could live on if, uh, you know, they in the photograph or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, but what I was looking for this time around, I'm like, well, Mrs. Mills must know that her picture right. is in the book, and how is she going to get it away from Nicole Kidman? Or is Nicole Kidman going to turn, you know? While she's talking to her and find her in there, I'm like, we can't do that because we'll give the game away too too soon. Right, <laughs> the long con. So, the ghosts are in for, for the long con. Why did she pull out her picture then and burn the rest? 
Right. Why? Why would you not want to cover well, that thing, evidence up? I wonder. I, if I wonder. She, I wonder if she's superstitious. Wait, oh, because she wanted like her... maybe it would undo her and she wouldn't exist anymore. Yeah, as like a ghost? maybe she believes in that superstition. And she's like, if I burn it, I'm going to disappear, huh. and I don't know where okay. I'm going to go. That makes sense. I think they're trying to tell Nicole Kidman that she's a ghost, and I think they left that on purpose. That could be too. Well, she left it in her. It was yeah, under her under, mattress. It was under her mattress. Was, yeah. that, was that there under Mrs. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was wondering. I didn't yeah. know who was like room she was. Like she took it, hid it under her uh, own mattress yeah. to keep Nicole Kidman from finding it until yeah. later just on in the movie, where she's like, little, "I need to know what's going on." Just based on her little speech in the kitchen when she's like, "I've always believed in these things," and she's talking about like gotcha. people, people believing in superstition. Like she believes in it, so yeah. she doesn't want to burn her own picture. But that's the thing that we're saying that these characters, what they're actually doing in the movie. Is their ghosts who know their ghosts, right? Yeah. They know their ghosts right from the get go. Yeah. And they're. Or they went through the journey that Nicole Kidman went through. Yeah. yeah. The realization. Well, they yeah. said that they, you know, later on she confesses yeah. that she did. Yeah. You know, but, you know, she also, because they lived in the house, are drawn to the house and we all have to live together. You right. know, even with these, uh, the, when she says the living and the dead, you think she's talking about like the, the help being ghosts and, uh, Nicole Kidman being the living, right. but she's actually saying that they're all the dead, and there's these other living people that were kind yeah. of interacting. That was, this is low key. Like at the end of this movie, she should have started writing a book, and it should have been like handbook for the recently deceased. Yeah. Like yeah. that's yeah. like again the Beetlejuice thing. The next, like that should have been the again one scene, and we can get this to another movie. This what is, did did he see Beetlejuice and say like this would be really creepy if we made like a serious version? You think of- he didn't see Beetlejuice? Of course yeah. he has seen Beetlejuice. I just wonder if it was an inspiration. Like you know, I could probably do like a creepy serious version of this, right? Um. But that was that was the moment for me that it was like truly confirmed that they were all when she was talking about like, oh, the living and the dead have to live together. I was like, yep, they're all dead. <laughs> Who's the living? Like, that was the moment. I was like, yeah, I'm on to you. Because the movie's still trying to snow you at that point. Yeah. Yes. that You don't know. Well, there's also, you know, they add like uh, some other layers of paranoia where um, I can't remember why it was that suddenly Nicole Kidman became suspicious of the because she was being given. um like oh. migraine medicine. Yeah. Oh, right. By Mrs. Mills. And then she's like, you know, looking at Mrs. Mills, like, you know, and you can see her head working. And she's like, is she doping me? Yeah. Is that right. why I'm hearing these, you know, and yeah. thinking that there's somebody else running around the house playing the piano mm-hmm. and whatever. Mm-hmm. And so she throws the stuff out. And I'm like, okay, but we know, right? That, you, you know, she, the, the Mrs. Mills is actually trying to go like, no, no, no. We, you got to come over to, you know, the other side with us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not so bad over here. <laughs> and mm-hmm. Eventually, you're going to get an idea of what actually happened. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. we can't do it all at once because she's fragile. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing. Like, ghosts are fragile when they first come in. They're like newborns. Like, yeah. Not, yeah well, they don't they know don't their muscles. Right. They, they, they don't, don't notice their transition. Like, right. they don't know what's happened, you know? Oh, where's yeah. the second The Others movie where they figure out their powers? <laughs> 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 That's, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've seen that. That is ghost, right? No, I mean, that's ghost, there. yeah. So, but I want to see Nicole Kidman do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, she could rattle the chains. Well, that was what was cool about the sand scene. Uh, that's the, yeah. so, that best editing I've seen in a long fucking time. That was movie. great. Holy shit. So well done. The, the whole sand scene, the, the way sand. it's edited is amazing. Like, it, the, the cut from, like, her... Th- Ripping up the papers and tossing it, them in the air. That, yeah, that whole thing there. is just seamless. like... Yeah. Because yeah. you're still... I mean, I'm sure as you're like watching this in the theater, for seeing it for the first time, you're just going... Oh, like, it's got to be a whole like shocking... If you had... Especially if you had no idea going to that part. It had to be mm-hmm. a whole like shocking like... Oh! And then... Because you're seeing all the reverse stuff of the seance. Like, you're seeing the stuff they would ask, ask in a seance. And you're seeing the, the characters you've known the entire oh, time right. responding to it. You're like, no, they're the ghost. And they're saying everything that the ghost would say. <laughs> yeah. and, holy shit. And like her grabbing the table and yeah. shaking it up yeah. and, and down. And like, that happens yeah. when the table shakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's The brilliant. mother is here this time. Yeah. You know, that kind it's of, yeah. brilliant. And at the same time, you're just like, oh my God, they're realizing they're dead. And like my heart just like sank for them. It, it's like, this is hell. This yeah. really is hell. Yeah. Like this, like... They are they're coming to a horrible realization, and yeah. like you don't usually see that side of the goat, the say <laughs> oh, yeah. I had to read the Bible, and I'm dead. This yeah. is yeah. bullshit, yeah. mom. Yeah. I read the Bible for no reason. Right? Like, this is hell. That's a yeah. long book. Yeah. Well, Small it's the, it, they're going for the it's the perspective thing, yes. right? It's like it can be hell or heaven, depending on how you see it. It's like, well, you're with mm-hmm. your kids, and you get to live in a you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
You yeah. live in a nice dark house for a while. Yeah, mm. yeah. And you get, well, you it's get, not dark anymore. Well, it's very true. Yeah. The light. Yeah, and because they're not, they find out that they're not photosensitive <laughs> after they're dead. Um, I actually didn't like that. I kind of wish the movie would have cut off a little earlier. I kind of do too because she's sitting. Like when she's sitting there with the kids and crying, she starts and she's, crying and she's explaining oh. things. I'm like, no, I get it. I get it. You're ruining me now. Oh. Like this. See, I actually thought after that, that's exactly where it should have stopped. After she's done giving her monologue, boom, then we're done. I don't need the pan out with them in the windows. I don't need the, it doesn't hurt anymore. Like, it, and her dancing and stuff like that stuff. It all seems kind of studio notes. I agree. I agree. And I, 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 w- I think I would have liked her like saying it out loud better if she was saying it out loud like to Mrs. Mills or something. And not right. explain to and the kids is like you remember that I yeah. killed you, like, right? You no, know, right. I killed you, right? right? Yeah, they're As there. He, yeah. My mama killed yeah. you. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I would have liked it better if she had been explaining it to her. That would have, yeah. you know, even even if like she, yeah, she she's a ghost, so she probably was there when it happened. She saw it, but just so like for her own. Catharsis, catharsis. Yeah. Just saying it to someone else besides her kids. Yeah, would have made yeah. more sense. To I, me. I agree. It doesn't make sense that she's telling them that, but her acting was so good in that moment that I was yeah. kind of wrapped up in like her performance of it. You know? Yeah. Like I didn't really mind yeah. it. I'm like, eh, I would have liked it better if she was talking to them, but I didn't right. mind it. Not a deal breaker. Just yeah, yeah, something noticeable. But I agree, it should have cut there. But everything after that seemed yeah. really unnecessary and yeah. kind of like we need to tie it up more but like with stuff that doesn't mean anything so i don't yeah. know i'm trying to think what it added i mean aside from the fact that you know clearly he wanted to end on a shot of the gate with the for sale sign on it sure. you know and the mm-hmm. idea that you know because i think that they're seeing that whole, the window like, again the whole yeah, but did, like, did you need that is the question well, yes like, that's what i'm saying well, like and they're like this is our house this is our house them repeating that that was yeah really I, didn't stupid. That. I didn't like that but like, i was like are they setting up for a sequel because that's yeah. what it feels like yeah yeah, I think they're just going like this is. He's just trying to give like this is what ghosts do. This is why they won't leave. This is why we yeah. have this problem. Mm-hmm. You know, but them saying that and then the for sale sign it to me, I was like, that's it, that's right. scream sequel S- right. studio notes. Yeah, yeah. It's studio being well, like, yes. just, yeah. it can also be like maybe. I mean, people need time to decompress at this point in the movie, like. Oh, so you know I like it better when a movie just like punches you in the gut and, 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 and it kicks you out. Yeah. And then like, bye, get out of here. I love that. You're just like, what? Like, yeah. Like, yeah, but this doesn't feel like that kind of movie, does no. it? Right. Like, this is a gentle, say, but a gentle, right. scary movie. To have yeah. it do that at the end of this, I yeah. mean, it would be shocking it and surprising was, and I would definitely it remember it. It takes a lot of confidence to do that. At, like, the end of Prisoners, I don't know if you guys remember, that punches yes. you in the gut and says, get the fuck out. And like, oh, that movie- I love that. Like that to me, that Ooh. movie gained so many points for that ballsy ass ending. Yeah, you know, it like, really did. I, I love respect that movie. a movie that was just like, That's nope, you don't movie. need any more. Get the fuck out. You know, yeah. the mist, the mist, the mist does that too. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I do like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, going back to what you're saying about the seance scene, I think and that's the, the turning. The, uh, I think the turning's the one that doesn't. Have, give did you, you the see ending. that? I haven't seen. I read everything about okay, it. Yeah. And every review said it doesn't have an ending. Yeah. 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 It's just yeah. So I'm now curious, I might. So I love that story. So we need to watch it now. So we have to watch it. I love the story, <laughs> but I, yeah, everything said it was a horrible horror movie. Yeah. I'm like, I love the story too much to have it polluted by this fucking, you know, like <laughs> DreamWorks movie. Um, now I got to see it. <laughs> yeah. But the, uh, the, the seance, what it does is it, it takes you into the, the scene in their perspective and then. You, you, it's like you lose your perspective while you're watching that because all of a sudden it switches over and you're with these other people, you know, who are in this house and it's kind of disorienting mm-hmm. as I guess it would be, uh, you know, if you were dead and found yourself in that uh, position. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but that's like, and then I thought like, is the movie going to stay with that perspective like right. through the end of the movie? Is this, yeah. did we make a turn here where like everything's going to be like, well, here's how we communicated with these uh, ghosts. I would here. have been upset if they had just stayed with yeah. everyone else. I mean, I know we were just talking about how you know the ending keeps going along with that, yeah. but it it is resolution. Yeah, if for you, them, if we didn't get any more time with them, we didn't get any closure with them. That would have sucked. Yeah. So we know yeah. how they're going to spend their afterlife. I guess is uh, you know yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, that's, uh, yeah. Would you want to? Would you want to know your day? <laughs> Maybe we're all dead right now. I was like, oh, Jesus. I was like, we're all back together again, and this is weird. Oh, no. Maybe maybe we didn't survive the COVID. I think about that all the time. I, I think like, about all the time. <laughs> like, Would it be this? No, I think about all the time. Are we in a computer simulation? I think about, yeah. are we actually in hell? Is this hell and we don't know it? Like, I think about that shit all the time. I wish I could switch it off, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'd rather know that I'm dead than feel like I'm crazy. I mean, yeah. 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 So yeah. I'll take it. At least she gets that relief. <laughs> yeah. 
She seems happy afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> they're just gonna they're just gonna have a cup she of tea. Fine. They're just gonna have tea. I know like, that's why it's like, why don't I make you a cup of tea? I'm like, do you have that? Once you're you're aware that like none of this is actually right. real. She said something about like home is you get to take it with you. You know, mm-hmm. kind of. Oh, you, you can take, take it with you. Sweet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a house, and you take the house with you after you're dead. There you go. It's very comforting. It's our house. Sorry. You just want to take your movies with you. Sorry. Yeah, I know. Don't, don't I? <laughs> Can I? I'm just sit in the basement and watch movies all day. No, long. I'm, I'm taking them. <laughs> I, I meant to ask you about that. Who's in your role for the movies? We'll discuss that off, off mic. All right. Uh, so, uh, thanks for sticking with us this long. We're going to tell you whether or not we individually recommend this movie. Um, since you've already seen it, you're basically just fine. Yeah. Did we like it? Uh, but first, we're going to answer some of your mail. In order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, and his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I got the class! Sean was so excited Igor, to summon him. I haven't seen you in a year! I know, it's nice to actually see him instead of Aww, seeing him through the Zoom Come screen. over here for belly rubs. Aww, <laughs> uh, well, I'm glad that He's technology finally worked yeah. out for us. So uh, Sean was able to summon, summon Igor again. Uh, congratulations. Thank sir. you. I'm very happy to be It's very Aww. happy. My hands. I missed it. <laughs> um... All right, so uh, first of all, I guess in order for you to participate in this interactive portion of our show, all you got to do is follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Uh, you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, about tonight's movie, The Others, Grant Parrish writes in and says, I love you guys. You know this. Yes. <laughs> but this movie you. feels... Too good for the freak show. Like, it's the, it's the anti-nothing-but-trouble. The <laughs> nega Howard the Duck. Or I can see how it might be the right time. I did a project on lighting for a theater appreciation class, and I used this movie as a reference, and I got an A. Good. So Great carry choice. on, good freakers. Well yeah. For lighting, I could see that. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's okay to treat ourselves every once in a while to like a good a steak. Movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can't yeah. all be junk food. Yeah, exactly. Right. I'm yeah. So, the three so, course meal. meal. I feel like this was a fine discussion. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's good. <laughs> uh, Peter Gatt says, "I was going to use a famous quote from a popular film, but it's kind of a spoiler for uh, people who haven't watched this yet. So, but for those in the know." Know what the quote is. I, I texted it to Holly when she told me she was picking this. I like did the SpongeBob meme font. And I was like, I am your goner. Yeah. And I was, and then she was like, I haven't seen it. I was like, oh, oops. Oh, oh, I thought he was, oops. I thought the famous quote was, I see, I dead, see dead people. people. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, well, I just my, like that you texted that. <laughs> I am your goner. Yeah. I, like, I knew what you were talking like, yeah. about. I was like, wait, what? Uh, Michael Whitaker says, I'm not sure how I feel about this, but. Was this the start of the haunted house, but with a weird twist trend in ghost movies? I think we discussed that. Yeah, yeah, right. we did. Well, kind of. I mean, I th- yeah, I think we kind of we, we talked about it. Oh, we yeah. did. I all think right. so. I mean, yeah, we did. Know. Rewind about forty five minutes. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So last week we watched a movie called Wes Craven's New Nightmare. About that movie, Jacob Cotner write, wrote in and said, "What a unique film." I saw it opening weekend with my parents. My mom jumped 10 feet when Freddy popped out of the closet. I was impressed by how smart this movie was then and still appreciate most of it. The only complaint is that Freddy turns into a turns the stupid quips on during the climax. He does. Yeah. It's not as bad. Like he gets a few in there and he wouldn't be Freddy without. Yeah, 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 it's it's toned down. You gotta give him something. (laughs) It's you know, Robert Angle's like, give me one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, he even had them in the first one. He's just cruel. He's a cruel bastard, isn't it? Yeah. Uh CJ Lewis says, I love the entire meta aspect of this movie. I always thought Wes Craven had the right idea that the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise has gone as far as it could go as being a pure slasher movie or pure slasher film. If only the makers of Paranormal Activity, Final Destination, The Purge, and many other horror franchises could learn something from this yeah we're looking at you halloween as well like you can be done yeah you could be done. i don't know where else that, that story goes at this point i you really don't i there's nothing left to tell no we can be done. we have what four timelines going in halloween right now we don't need any more i we're love good. you we can be done yeah. <laughs> um michael piatowski says the new nightmare was so far ahead of its time yes oh, it was we yeah. talked about it on that episode yeah mm-hmm. agree <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, you weren't here. I was out of town. Hey, you have seen the movie, though, right? No. Oh, no. no. I know. I, when he... Holly, if when, you'd stop missing just my movies, <laughs> then this would be a problem. If you would pick what you actually said you were going to pay. I oh, yeah. that's <laughs> beside the point. Sean called an audible. I was so mad that, yeah. when you sent that message. I was like, no, I want to see that. <laughs> Uh well um but now you get to listen to our episode hey. um about the previous week's episode which was shivers uh Steve Carney writes in and says the brood the dead zone the fly and a history of violence will always be my favorite David Cronenberg films I'd place shivers near the very bottom of the list mm. along with rabid scanners and Videodrome those may- movies make me sleepy I yeah, can see that I, I, I gotta agree with you yeah. there I need to see more David Cronenberg I was gonna say I was gonna say, I haven't seen uh what would you say um, uh, the Brood. The Brood. Yeah, I haven't seen the Brood. That's oh yeah, a gross movie. Is it a gross movie? I mean, yeah. I would assume. Yeah, his it's, early stuff is it, like, it's like like very gross, in a like, different way, gross like than his other gross? movies. It's. I mean, there's like babies involved. Oh, gross. I don't need that. That's not good. Well, I need that. Yeah, I don't want they're like. Uh, I mean, the Brood. It's called the Brood. You yeah. know, so I don't need yeah. that. True. Yeah, aren't they like the uh, the physical manifestations of her rage or? Something? Yeah, and like, I just oh. remember her like <laughs> like cleaning them off like a cat. Oh yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's oh, something else. And yeah. Oliver Reed's in that movie. Yep. Ah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God, I haven't. I don't know if I've ever seen that one the whole way through. But I mean, I'm a big fan of Rabbit and Videodrome, but maybe not Rabid. scanners. Uh, Brett Williams. Oh, so we posted a photo of Barbara Steele about to make out with the neighbor mm-hmm. from across the hall. Brett Williams said, "Oh my." I think I'm going to have to watch this one before I listen to your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you well, we got one listener. Yeah. Uh, Carson Snar and Peter Gatt both thought that uh, the actor who, um, I forget what his name is, Alan, and that he looked like Ross from Friends. Yeah. Uh, Holly, what Schwimmer. did you say? He looked like. Cross between David Schwimmer and Adam Driver. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. There yes. you go. Uh, everyone agrees with that assessment. Uh, Nelson Nascimento says, if Alien Night of the Creeps and It Follows had a baby, you could quite possibly get something like this. Although some years before any of them, you could tell Cronenberg was a one of a kind right from his first feature. For sure. Yeah. It's a great assessment. There you go. And MF Mad uh, wrote in after we, uh, that's the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, MF Mad. Mm-hmm. Uh, we posted a scene of the slug coming through a bathtub drain <laughs> and slithers. But without any context of which direction you're looking, he said, are you sure that's not a scene from Porky's? <laughs> uh, oh, ah, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I hope yeah. it's not from Porky's. That's... That's an unfortunate young man. I know. I told you it had a. It looks like a. It's a phallic uh, looking uh, slug. That movie. Yeah. Uh, so uh, now we're gonna go around the room you and tell you. Love Porky. It's funny. Like there's that. Um, it's funny. Like, it's really. You know. I don't know if I've ever heard anyone. Say yeah, that. me neither. All right, I don't, yeah. all right. I don't love Porky's. There are some very funny moments in that have movie you, that I do like a lot. Have you ever, guys ever seen when Comedy Central plays Porky's? Do they show five minutes of it? Oh, yeah, it's it's like the most pointless. Long, yeah. The most pointless thing to watch on television. I don't television think I've ever seen that the whole yeah. way through either. Porky's? Yeah. You should watch Porky's. Or Porky's 2 the next I, day. I or not, Porky's Colin, 3. I have not seen right, Revenge. I think you're fine. I have not seen the other Porky's. Colin, I have a feeling you would not like Porky's. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd like Porky's. I like Bob Clark movies. You'd like Porky's. From that era. I Bob mean, Clark movies are all over the fucking place. Yeah. That's a, yeah, but I'm not saying feel, anything. That, like is, like a, that is a wide Clark spectrum. Yeah. Like, we're talking pre-Small Soldiers Bob Clark, right? Like We're talking back Do you like a Christmas story? Yeah. Okay. I was going to say. All right. Next week, Porky's. All right. Well, now we're going to go around the table. We're going to tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, The Others, starting with Colin. Colin, since you're in the seat, you're uh, going to go first. What did you think of The Others? Um, yeah, so like when you said that we were going to watch The Others, I was actually like, oh, The Others. And I was like asking myself, like, why did I think that? Right. Because you watch the movie and it's a extremely well uh, executed well told, well performed. I mean, like all around class sure. A, yeah. uh, you know, project. And I think um, so. I mean, obviously, I'm going to recommend it. Naturally. Doing some soul Naturally. searching here. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think it's because, like, you know, it's a movie that hinges so much. Like, it's building so much toward that finale mm-hmm. that once you get to the finale and you're like, okay, then you know, you're done with the movie. And I mean, obviously, that's how movies are designed to be seen. Right? Sure. Most people see a movie <laughs> once. But I always sit there grading them on like, I can't wait to go back and watch this awesome scene in that movie 
and it doesn't it's not a movie with a bunch of awesome scenes mm-hmm. you know or big set pieces it all is completely orchestrated to get you to that final moment with the only possible uh detour being this creepy scene with the possessed old lady or you know the mm-hmm. in the the communion um get up um so yeah i've always i've kind of avoided it for the past 20 years just being like eh, you know i saw it once and mm-hmm. so uh it was interesting to go back and watch it again knowing you know where it ends up mm-hmm. and to see how it get there i know you're saying like why do i have the blu-ray i ordered it because we were gonna watch it ah. for the first time being here i'm like <laughs> well you know why not it's a classic i think that's how you come down it. it's a classic movie uh, that uh, you know fits in with the pantheon of uh, old dark house uh, films. It's the best one of. I don't know. I mean, it's probably like a good ten years on either side of this. That um, you know, you're gonna say like this is this is the one from that you know generation. Um, and it was uh, surprisingly this time around. I had forgotten. You know, like yeah, I jumped. Okay, you got me. It, <laughs> yeah. I jumped. You can admit it, Colin. It's fine. Was, we all jumped. We all jumped. Space, yeah, safe space. Yeah. There was a couple of like uh, that I had forgotten about and shocked the shit out of me. And I'm like, okay, so this is clearly working. This is a, a good movie. Um, yeah, I would definitely recommend it. Sean, what'd you think of the others on your first watch? Um, color me surprised, I will say. Because, uh, yeah, when you said we were watching the others, I was like, oh, because I'm not a f- big fan of Nicole Kidman. Um, and I'm also like, I know it's a ghost movie. That's the only thing I really knew about this movie coming in. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't really like ghost movies. Mm-hmm. So I was not excited to watch this movie. But like I said, I'm surprised because it is... It is quite a trip. Like, it is... They are... It, 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 what is this? Uh, two hours? What is the official time on this one? Uh, 101 minutes, I think. 101 minutes. Yeah. 141. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that's not bad. I thought it was more like two hours. Um, it is... Um, it is doing... It's doing a lot of work, like you said, up until that finale. It's it's working you towards that. And I think it does... I mean, I think it does an extremely good job. Um, I mean, it had me guessing throughout the movie uh, about, you know, who was who, what was what. My mind was actively going with this movie mm-hmm. as it was going. And I, you know, can't say that for a lot of movies and especially like a ghost movie starring Nicole Kidman. Yeah. Um, so, yes, I was very surprised about this movie. Um, the acting. I mean, I'm just, I just don't like kid actors. So, like, this movie had everything going against it for me. The kids <laughs> the kids were good in it. I mean, everyone's good. The story's good. Like, they're not giving away, like, too much. Um, it really gets your mind going about, wait, alright, so like, the the flip of who's the ghosts, like, who are the others, like, it's it's just a really, it's a good script. Really well done script. Um, it's shot really well. Um, I'm very surprised at this movie. Um, I'll recommend it. Um, yeah, I was very surprised. I, I I skipped this for, you know, like Colin, 20 years. Had no inclination to watch this movie. But thank you, Holly, for bringing it tonight. You're welcome. I'm glad I did. <laughs> I would recommend the others. Michaela. I think part of the reason why people like one and done this movie or don't see it is it has a bad poster. Bad poster, bad cover art. Like, it's ugly and it doesn't yes. match the tone of the movie at all. I it, It's very of its time. It's very 2001 poster art. It does art. look like it. Yeah. Um, but I did a quick Google search for 2001 horror movies because I wanted to see what its contemporaries were. And holy shit, this is high art in comparison to everything <laughs> else that was out at the time. You got former freak show pick 13 Ghosts came out this year. Uh, Jeepers Creepers, scary movie too. Uh, Jason X, The Hole, Devil's Backbone, Hannibal, it, John Carpenter's Ghosts of Mars. It was a really bad year for horror wow. movies. So <laughs> this um, really, really rises to the top quickly when you look at its contemporaries. Um, I mean, I think this is beautifully directed. Uh, uh, Nicole Kidman is stunningly beautiful in every frame of this movie. I actually mm-hmm. think that this like time period look on her looks better. She does than, look good in this time. Yeah, yeah. Like than any modern look actually, I think looks on her. I think this is the look for her. Mm-hmm. Uh, the costume design on her is stunningly gorgeous. This should have won all those kind of technical Oscars in that aspect. It should have won cinematography. It should have won costume design. It's not flashy. Did it? When, when it I don't think so. I don't think so either. It should have won maybe sound got, design. Maybe got nominated for some stuff. Sound mm. design, absolutely, yeah. too. It should have won all those technical Oscars. Um, it it's, It is, is even better than I remembered it being. I remembered liking it, but it really like 
really roped me in this time stronger than I thought it would. And haunted house ghost movies are not my thing. That is Holly's thing. It is not my thing. So I, like going into this, I was like, well, I really hope it lives up to what I remember it being. And it did. It was even better than I remembered it being. Um, The kid actors, uh, I agree, Sean. I was like, oh, God, these are two are going to be too much. But they were just enough. They knew when to stop pushing it, yeah. I felt like. Um, and it's kind of a shame neither of them had better careers because for kid actors, they're a lot better than a lot of the other ones we've seen out there. Yeah, that little kid, the little boy looks like he should be in like a little boy in every British like right. Uh, he should be the Dickensian, Jacob Tremblay, you know, coal yeah. sooted. He should have been two thousand one Jacob Tremblay. He should have been a fucking I mean, everything. Yes. Um, I think I think even if you know the spoiler and you haven't seen it, still watch it because I still think it's worth a watch. I think this might be one of Nicole Kidman's best performances, if not her best performance. I buy everything she's doing in this movie. Um, whereas other things like go see our separate wives episode, <laughs> no, I'm not buying it. Um, speaking of, I forgot to tell this story on our stepford wife, but I saw her once in person uh-huh. and she is stunningly beautiful in person is as she? well. Yeah. Cause I used to live in Nashville and her and Keith Urban live in Nashville mm-hmm. and I worked at a very high end expensive mall where celebrities would come shop They didn't come to where I worked, but I would see them shopping in the mall and, uh, I mostly saw like country music stars, which I did not care about at right. all. Um, but I, like you would get to learn their cars after a once in a while because they, drive very obvious cars like she had a white Range Rover and it didn't have tinted windows so you could see her and Keith Urban every time they were driving and I pulled up next to them at a stoplight and I looked over and he was driving and she was in the passenger seat and I was just staring at them and they both they both looked over and saw me staring looked straight ahead and then looked back and she waved at me and then I waved at her and I was like oh my god Nicole Kidman waved at me and that was like the best celebrity interaction I had when I lived in Nashville so I cannot attest to her height count and as we were talking about uh, before because uh, she was sitting in a car right, so I didn't see how tall she actually was but beautiful in person and that was probably 10 years ago so um, definitely recommend this movie I, I don't care if you've seen it parody if you know the twist still watch it it's still mm-hmm. worth it uh, really disappointed that this director didn't have more of a career in the United States because like this is like Roger Deakins level like cinematography I feel like I feel like we should really you know bring this director back and give him a second chance or something but I mean, maybe it, but it, it also may be like up to him. Maybe he didn't like yeah, the U.S. That's way true. of making that's movies. True. Like, I'm going back to Spain. But, th- yeah. but this movie was a huge hit, though, right? It made yeah. a fuck ton of money. Yeah. So it's not like this was a flop, you know? Yeah. And the Spanish, like I said, they treated it like a national film. Right. You know, with the Goyas and all right. that. So, yeah. Right. So, yes, definitely recommend, even if you're like us and you're like, I don't need to rewatch it. Rewatch it. Yeah. Holly. Yeah. Uh yeah, the budget for this was seventeen million, and worldwide it made over two hundred. That's a gigantic so, hit. Yeah, yeah, it still like boggles my mind that this yeah. caught on. Like, you know, but, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, um, yeah. So obviously, this was my first time watching it. I'd heard of it. I knew very little about it. Um, and yeah, but I, I don't know. I, I'd heard enough that I was like. We should watch this. Like, I know there's a a massive twist. I know it's got like a kind of a cult following of like, we should probably watch this. And I I was not, I was, I was very surprised. Um, I, I really, really enjoyed this movie. Like we, you know, we established haunted house, ghost movies. Love it. That's my thing. Um, but I, I am very aware that it can get played out, that it can be tired. It can be, you know, it can be boring. Um, but this movie really, keeps your mind working it really makes you uh, makes you anticipate like the next the next thing and it engages you very well it really does you know I, there's there's layers that you're trying to figure out okay what's their motive you know are they dead are they alive there's there's so many things that that you're looking for in this movie and uh, you know and I, I'm sure you guys were all doing too. You're looking in the background to see if we're missing something. Like, is there going to be a face? Is because that was another thing. Is I don't know if it's because we're conditioned by movies that well, like we to definitely put- are because they. I mean, they yeah. shot it that way too. With yeah, every they- time they do, they messed with mirrors in this movie to yes. to know to yes. know. Um, there was never anything. Never anything. Yeah. It was just there. It, He's yeah. like building in this yes. creepiness. That you're he knows, looking. yes, but he's not going to do anything with it because, like, I know this will yes. make people uneasy if we just put this stuff in the movie. And it's little things like that because you know, through the whole movie, I'm looking in the mirrors, I'm looking behind them, I'm right? looking back, and I'm always looking for something. And that's genius because, like you said, there was never anything there, <laughs> but I kept looking. And 
I don't know. It's such a well-crafted movie. Like you were saying earlier, it really does play to, like, I believe he's thinking, like, this would scare me, so I'm going to put this in my movie. And I think that that's really effective. Um, I think he made the he made a movie that he wanted to make. You know, I don't think there was anyone really hindering him from crafting what he wanted to. You know, he wrote, he directed it. Um, and I think this is a beautiful movie. I, I really enjoyed it. You know, we don't watch a lot of movies on the freak show that I'm like, wow, that's like, that's art right there. Like that is, that is a fucking film right there. <laughs> but I maybe really what felt- is more classically known as art. Yeah. I would say, because <laughs> right. I mean, the, the, we watched some the shit, high art and low art. Right. We still, it's yeah. still art, obviously varying degrees of it. But I'm like, this movie makes you think it makes you appreciate Like this is a really fucking good movie. So yeah, I, I recommend the hell of it. I think it's a good time. Yeah, for sure. The others. Go watch All right, it. well, that means uh, that's one, two, three, that's four. We're uh, back. Freak show. We're back. Yeah. Unanimous. <laughs> I mean, you got to check it out. It's like required by law, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Yeah, they passed it while we were all in <laughs> yeah. pandemic. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know, but <laughs> yeah. you have to watch now. Yep. Um, all right, well, thanks for sticking with us. Uh, next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Michaela. What are we watching next week? Summer starting up. Ooh. So for the summer, we're going to do some more... Uh, Blockbuster bomb movies. Uh-oh. As we right. did that last summer, All right. and we're gonna start with a movie I feel like everyone's forgotten about: 2007's Shoot 'Em Up. Yes, oh, oh, yes. Oh, there's a carrot in that movie. There That's all I know. I have not. I've got another movie I have not seen. Clive Owen, Paul, Paul Giamatti. Giamatti. Yep. Yeah, and Monica, Monica Bellucci. Bellucci yep. Yep. We're gonna okay. shoot 'em up. All right, so that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, The Basement. Oh, hey, for real, like. For real? Oh, no. Oh. I should just go shut the lights <laughs> off. Yeah. It's going, yeah. All right. Well, uh, go, yeah, hit the. Okay. Yeah, The Basement is uh, going dark.